Hi everyone and welcome back to my channel. For those of you that are new here, my name is Ellie Slightome and I've just finished my degree at the University of Leeds and I'll be going on to study a Masters in Mathematics at the University of Cambridge in September. So today I thought I would walk you through my CV, which is the CV that I applied to for both Cambridge and Oxford and I was fortunate enough to receive offers from both universities. So this is for postgraduate study, I appreciate if you are applying at undergrad you won't need to submit a CV, but if you are applying at postgraduate then you do need to submit a CV and it's an academic CV. So I appreciate some people may not know the difference between an academic CV and a personal kind of CV that you would apply ordinarily for a job, which is why I'm just going to walk you through exactly what I put on my CV for both Cambridge and Oxford and talk you through everything that I've put on there and why I've included it. Before I dive in and show you my CV I just want to say that anything that is included in here do not copy they will know they will have records of previous applicants and they will know if you have copied so I'm putting this out there showing you kind of a rough idea of what you can put in your CV but please don't copy it word for word please be kind of imaginative with your own cv and don't write exactly everything that i've put in here you can follow the structure but please don't copy anything because they will know and you will definitely not get an offer if they know you've copied from somebody else so i guess we'll get stuck into the video and i will move you onto my screen where you can see my cv okay so this is my cv the reason for this big red kind of thing here is i just put my address there along with my email i think it was that i put there oh and my telephone number and i've kept these two little bits here just because if you want to check out my linkedin then here it is you're more than welcome to check it out um and that i thought it was quite important to include linkedin because sometimes you post things on linkedin that you necessarily don't post on your on your academic cv so an academic cv is obviously more towards academia you know quite intuitively it's less likely the stuff that you have done in your spare time so less likely jobs that you've done i did include a couple on here just because at third year you don't really have a lot of academic achievements really other than what you've done at university so your grades um so it's always important that if you are an active member of linkedin and you post on linkedin and equally github which is where i put my code um, I don't use this code account anymore, I use my other Code of the Future account which is where I teach people how to code if you're interested in that little side note but it's always important to just add a couple of links onto your CV because then the people that are looking at your CV can I suppose, explore a little bit more about you so obviously my CV has a lot more on here than what my academic CV would do. Okay, so the first thing that I did was I added a personal profile, so I'll just read it out to you. A self-motivated and passionate individual looking to pursue a master's in mathematical and theoretical physics. I'll stop there and just say that this was the CV that I applied for Oxford. So obviously when I applied for Cambridge, I just altered my master's to the appropriate course that I was applying to. A current summer research intern and university student with a palpable desire to research into fluid dynamics, specifically the astrophysical area extensive drive and ambition to research which was further amplified after obtaining the highest mark in, in the fluid dynamics module in a class of over 130 mathematics and physics students and ranking within the top five percent of my second year cohort experience in mathematics and physical research as well as presenting at conferences and constructing research papers so that's a little bit of a summary of kind of what i have done academic wise so obviously I love fluid dynamics, I put that in there straight away because that's what I want to specialise in on both the courses. I then kind of talked about what academic achievements I have according, you know, with that. At this point it was after my second year, so the only kind of module I'd done to do with fluid dynamics was one module and I attained the highest mark in it. Um, after I submitted this I was able to actually attain the highest mark in fluid dynamics too, which... Um, was pretty cool um, it's kind of a shame that I wasn't able to include it on here but obviously it would have been too late to apply by then when I got my result for it and then finally I just added in here that I've kind of had experience presenting you know I've got good communicational skills and also research papers so I did that as part of my research internship and that I think is quite important that I've had experience with that because as part of the masters on both courses you could do a dissertation kind of research project so if you've had experience constructing research papers then it's always helpful that so that will help you towards the masters okay so the next thing that i included was my education so i didn't want to kind of bombard the reader with loads like all of my modules i did that on my cv before and i think it's great that they can see that but equally on my linkedin if you go on on my linkedin if they're really really that interested and i go down to my university of leeds i literally put all of my grades on here and also as part of 
your application you submit a transcript so they can see literally every module that you've done or already and the grades that you've got with it so all I did was I just said what my grade was expected so a first class I put down my average for, for my second year and my first year I put second year first obviously because second year counts first year doesn't I put the date so they know when I'm graduating obviously the university and the course title and then I just added the relevant modules so here I just basically said obviously fluid dynamics 1, 2, hydrodynamic stability, vector calculus, all of these kind of modules. Um, so I just decided to put relevant modules so they know that I have got the prerequisites. You know, I'm studying modules that will help me towards the masters that is. Okay, so that was kind of a summary of my education. I thought they've got my transcript, they know how my grades have gone. There's not much else I can really talk about that. So next was research experience. So obviously this is a big part of an academic cv is what research you have done and don't worry most people haven't done any research when i was applying obviously covid had ruined a lot of things a lot of internships got cancelled and you're more likely to get an internship in your second year so i was very fortunate that mine still went ahead so obviously for my research experience i put down my internship which was this so it was sensors and atmospheric science research intern I, I'll read all this out. Um, uh, so I was a Census and Atmospheric Science Research Intern and it was part of the UK Space Agency's um, project. It was funded by the UK Space Agency. I put the date as usual so they know that I've recently done it and then I'll read out exactly what I've put here. One of the 50 space research interns selected to work on space flight and satellite research projects funded by the UK Space Agency. So that's essentially an overview of what the internships were. Uh, researching into specifics of FMCW Doppler radar data processing, specifically how range and Doppler velocity are extracted from observed spectra. That's what I did on my internship. Uh, then I put programming code for creating velocity intensity diagrams by range and displaying these appro appropriately through Python, which enhanced my ability to apply scientific and mathematical theory to quantitative data. So what I've done here is I've said this is what I did and how it is enhanced you know, my ability. So I've said it's enhanced my scientific and maths ability, which obviously they're looking for because they want someone that's done an internship that has taught them things, not someone that's just done an internship and that's it. Um, you know, I was able to do this internship and it's helped enhance my science and maths and research and things like that. Then researching the scattering of electromagnetic radiation at hydrometers, as well as the relationship between terminal fall velocity of hydrometers with droplet size. So this was something that I kind of did later on towards the end of my internship. Um, it sounds very, you know, in depth. I must admit, it was quite, uh, it was an okay aspect of my my project, and I really, I did really enjoy it. Programming code to create prop, and then I said programming code to create profiles of the droplet size distribution and profiles of information derived from these, such as liquid water content, and displaying appropriately through Python. Okay, so you can see that this research internship was very much kind of coding, but equally I've applied some maths to it. And that's the reason why I included it, because it was a research internship and I was able to write a research paper on top of it, um, which I did towards the later stage of my internship, which was really, really cool. Now, this second part, this was something that changed slightly. The University of Leeds, we apply for a kind of research project and my research project actually got changed, unfortunately. So the stuff that I included here was different to what I'd actually done in my research project but similarly it's very similar stuff in fact if not more physics related it was still computational applied maths it was just a different research project as long as you've done some form of research and dissertation on something that's appropriate I think they're happy with that so what I would say is include your dissertation you may not know what it's on already but just include it so you will be doing research on that and this is what you're going to be researching on similarly if you're at master's level and you just want to do an extra master's or whatever put down what you've done at masters and, and just any research that you've done in your university. So that's why I included here kind of the dissertation aspect of things. So they can see that that was running that the year that I applied. And then obviously because I'm only a third year, I didn't have any more research experience. I, you know, you, there's not a lot you can do when you do apply. An academic CV is very hard to write when you are a uni student that hasn't had much experience, especially you apply in your end of second year and most people don't get internships in their first year. It's very kind of unheard of just because most people don't apply, you know, offer people experience in, in first year. I was able to get some work experience in something completely different, which I'll talk about in just a second. So don't worry if you don't have any research experience, just write down your, what if you've done any research at all at university or if you've done any in terms of internships or anything else, 
and definitely put your dissertation down because that will help you know them understand that you are doing a dissertation so then additional experience so this is kind of just stuff that i wanted to include because it's it shows that i do get up to things outside of university and i've been proactive so obviously first year summer um i did some work experience with um, an audit company so bdo which is the fifth largest accountancy firm in the world and i worked on the audit of manchester city football club which was quite cool i must admit um i saw pepe i think it was who was the manager and it was quite a definitely a surreal experience i don't know much about football so um sorry if i've got that wrong but it was it was quite a cool experience so i put that in there so i did some obviously experience then and then i did this intern this and then i did this insight week which was really cool um it just showed you a little bit more about being a software engineer and coding so i guess my cv has quite a lot of coding in there but you know coding and maths go hand in hand really really well um which is always good so i did that these were little kind of things i'd done obviously i had done other things you know other experience which if you look at my linkedin i've kind of done quite a few things on here i just didn't include them because they weren't as appropriate i guess um at this point this was before i'd set up any of my coding channel and things like that then i went on to talk about my relevant research skills so this is how so this is kind of when i do come on to do the masters i'll be able to do the research project quite well because i've got good research skills and i suppose these do apply to just studying anyway because if you can research well then you can research outside of the the lecture material so i'll read out what i did programming knowledge in languages such as python r and latex undertaking a molecular simulation module through the department of physics and astronomy university of leeds which will further enhance my programming ability in the physical sciences then tenacity and diligence for developing research projects because obviously i've done research projects meticulous and thorough when approaching mathematical problems which is just you know that's me all over i guess um ability to analyze research literature to an outstanding standard and i was actually told on my dissertation that my kind of research was outstanding so <laughs> I guess that you know that bow that kind of went quite well and then i did my achievements and funding so this is stuff that i'd kind of achieved outside of i suppose uni and also inside of uni so obviously i got my internship that was funded by the uk space agency i got the highest grade in my fluid dynamics module with 96 percent i ranked within the top five percent of my of the undergraduate students at second year in second year I raised over £2,300 for the Great North Air Ambulance Service by cycling the length of England in six weeks. I was a previous British motocross champion and sponsored rider for Honda, and I was interviewed for national television, radio and newspapers, including ITV, BBC, STV, in regard to my fundraising and motocross accomplishments. So I thought I'd mix things up there. Obviously, normally in an academic CV, it's, it's more of a kind of what funding you've had, what kind of academic achievements. So if you've got any um, awards at the university, if you've got the top 10, if you've been top of a class um top of a module like i put there it more so that but i thought i would include my other extracurricular things just to say that i'm just to show that i'm just a well-rounded person and then i've got things outside of academia then this is additional courses so this is what i'd kind of done in my spare times so during the summer i was really interested in astrophysical fluid dynamics um, and i got the lecture notes and i kind of went through the lecture notes and and found it really really interesting so i thought i would put that in there and just talk about how I had, you know, learned more around the area that I was interested in. Here I did an introduction to web development course. The reason I included this was just because it shows teamwork. Um, you know, I, I'm able to work with random university students that I was just put together with and also, you know, just I guess shows that I do want to learn things outside of, of what I do. And then similarly here I did a kind of virtual experience and this was just to do with coding as, as again. So during my second year, I kind of was like, oh, maybe I want to do software engineering um, as a job. And then I realized that I just love math so much and, and thought maybe not. So there's a lot more coding in this. I think it's always nice to include things that you, you kind of enjoy outside. But obviously here I talked about my interest in, in fluid dynamics. So that was always good. And then these are just memberships of professional societies. So these are these are societies that I'm a part of. So UK SEDS, if any of you enjoy space, um, you probably will have heard of UK SEDS. I'm part of that society, um, Royal Aeronautical Society, Women Tech Makers. And then these are just the societies I'm at at the University of Leeds. And they've kind of since changed. Um, but I put them on there anyway because I've previously been members of them. And then conference presentations and posters. So usually this is, you usually have like a section for your publications if you publicate, pu publish anything. But obviously it's very unlikely that you, 
third year students will have had a publication unless you've done research over the summer. Um, so I did my conference presentation which was essentially just what I did at my internship and it was moved remote unfortunately but it was part of like this space um, conference thing and then finally my references I've blurred out the kind of contact details but I had two people my academic references to a professor and a doctor from the department of maths and then I had my um, internship supervisor who was a physicist and test and development engineer so that is my CV I would say that it's it's definitely a little bit different to, I suppose, a CV for an academic CV for someone who is a postdoctoral, who's had publications, who's had different areas of research. If you type in an academic CV online, it will probably look very different, and you'll probably think, how do I tailor that to me when I literally haven't done much research? Um, and I guess that's why I've decided to show you this because I've shown you how you can alter it slightly for someone who doesn't have that experience you know a lot of people apply with academic cvs with 10 years experience we have none essentially so so i hope you enjoyed this video as i said at the beginning of the video please don't copy anything in this i would hate for you to get kicked out of this application because you've copied somebody else it's plagiarism they will test your cv against others that they've had in the system prior to that so please don't you know copy i hope the video has been useful and you've kind of got an idea of how to structure it if you are going to write a cv or if you just want help with an academic cv generally um if you did enjoy it then please like subscribe and comment and don't forget to hit the bell button as well because i'm releasing so many more videos like this this summer is going to be hectic because i've got so many videos planned so yeah make sure you hit the bell button so you don't miss out on any of those videos and i will see you all in the next video